I started this series because I was fed up of the 999 Sucks series. The 999 Sucks was getting on my nerves because it was just bad pay-per-view after bad pay-per-view after bad pay-per-view. So I have good happy memories of the WWF in the year 2000 and thought to myself, well, I know, let's do a series where we're reviewing what are going to be good pay-per-views and then we can enjoy it. My loyal fans, my subscribers, e.g. you people watching this right now, said, hey Mark, don't just do WWF, do WCW ones as well. I'd never seen the shows. I'd never seen the WCW shows from 2000. I've never ever seen them. So I thought, oh, all right then, yeah, okay, fine, we will, we'll do them. We'll do the WCW shows. And just think what I've had to endure, right, for doing them. I've had to watch the Great American Bash 2000, right? I've had to watch New Blood Rising 2000, which was so bad. But then we got Fall Brawl last month, I'm sure you remember. We gave it five and a half out of ten. It was such a marked improvement that we thought it's got to get better. You're sure the rest of the year, the rest of the time of WCW is going to be better. And then we get to this one. Halloween Havoc 2000. You're not going to like this. Well, you might. I know that a lot of you seem to prefer my reviews when I'm talking about bad shows because I get a lot more angry and I get a lot, a lot more angry. I tell you, let me tell you something. This show actually makes me depressed. This one, that's not the best this one does. This one makes me depressed because you just started watching it going, this has got to improve. And it just doesn't. Right, so let's get on with it. So, the Natural Born Thriller members... Um, Mark Jindrak and Sean O'Hare defeated the Filthy Animals of uh, Billy Kidman and Rey Mysterio and the Boogie Knights, and I'm genuine when I call them that, the Boogie Knights, and then Alex Wright, remember him, and Disco Inferno to retain the tag team titles. So, what can we tell you about this one? Kidman and Wright double team Jindrak briefly, doesn't go very far, Rana by Kidman on right. O'Hare owns the clotheslines, but then gets DDT, and it's a nice one to be fair, by Disco. Um, Mishinoku, Mishinoku, sorry, driver by O'Hare. Alex Wright looks pretty damn rubbish out there, but the, the scary thing is, right, is that Alex Wright is probably the best worker in this match. In, in this match going on, at this moment, Alex Wright works the hardest, and he still looks rubbish, and that's a very, very scary thought, is it not? Stackplex spot looks great by uh, Wright and Jindrak O'Hare and again and once again he cleans house including right nice little spot where him and um, Jindrak they hit toss Billy Kidman from the outside into the ring that's a nice one uh, power slam by Wright looks very good which is annoying because like what I've just said high spots are plenty to the outside by Rey Mysterio and Billy Kidman and there's no WCW channel and that bothers me it really 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 does uh, Kid Crusher on right, who uh, makes the kick. He made literally. I've seen some bad kickouts in my time. This kickout was horrific. It wasn't badly timed. It just the way he rolled out of the cover just looks so bad. It just looks so bad. So bad. Disco hits a stunner, but Ray breaks it up. A Sean Ton Bomb gets the win at 10:05. The wall. Then comes out and basically kicks the shit out of everyone, including Conan, who had come out with the filthy animals and had been doing commentary. He literally beats the living tar out of Conan to the point where Conan has to be helped to the back by the referees. Now bear that little fact in mind because it's important for later. I promise you. I promise it is. So, of course, the wall's in the ring, and that leads to the next match. And certainly, that match was a one and a half star match. It was all right, I promise you, other than one exception. This was the best match of the night. One and a half stars. Think about that. So, the next match, oh dear God, um, is the wall's already in the ring, so his match is scheduled against Reno for the hardcore title. So, let's get on with that one. There's Reno. Who the f fuck is Reno? What's he done since WCW, really? Um, defeated Sergeant A. Wall to retain the hardcore title. There's a table bump. 30 seconds, probably not even that, into this match. How to take a table bump. The table bump is meant to be a big spot. It's meant to be climatic. You're meant to lead up to it. No. This is just thrown out there. Bam. There's your table bump. And it only gets two. 
Farina. Apparently, it's, this is it, apparently like, they, they drill this into us over and over again. This old school hardcore rules. Apparently, the new school hardcore rules what, you know, is that you start in the back and you work your way to the ring, as we've seen in quite a few WCW hardcore rules re matches recently, haven't we? Well, this one is you start in the ring and you end in the ring and that we don't go backstage. That's the point they make with saying you we don't go backstage. We, it's all done in the ring. Better man, it's important. <laughs> so. um Weapon shots, and there's lots of them. You know, there's kendo sticks, there's bins, there's all sorts of rubbish shots that are not really sold very much and don't mean well anything. Uh, Reno hits a hatchet to the head on the uh, on the ramp, blatantly stealing Extreme Day's finishing move. Reno then sets up two more tables next to the ramp and promptly gets powerbomb through them. Stupid! Um, Wall, <laughs> why would he go for a cover? Why would he go for a cover after powerbombing someone through two tails? Oh, no, no. He picks up Reno, and guess what he does? Guess? Go on. No, you're wrong. He goes backstage. Something we've been told won't happen in this match. He goes backstage. Yes. And then in the best wrestling spot I've ever seen. I've been watching wrestling since 1985. I can remember a sure fuck a lot of wrestling. And I'll tell you something. I don't think I've ever ever seen anyone use a plastic monitor before. He picks up a monitor, right? And you'd think that like, when he picks it up, it'd be ripped out of whatever it was connected to. But no, the picture stays on the screen. When he holds it up, you notice that it's got no wires into it. But there's still a picture on it. Is it battery operated? What Mark wonders? No. It's a fake monitor. Bang! That's fucking great. That's the best spot I've ever seen. And if you don't think I'm being sarcastic, then you're a fool. Back to the ring and more tables are set up. A neck breaker by Reno on the table gets the win. This is horrible. It's stupid. It's the first of many duds of the evening. Out come um, uh, the new Natural Born Thriller members, Chuck Plumbo and Sean Stasiak. They beat on the wall until Chavo Guerrero and Lash LaRue make the save. But then we go to promos in the back. But then we're told that a match has been made, an impromptu match. It's Chavo Guerrero and Lash LaRue versus Plumbo and Stasiak. So they do their entrances. They were in the ring, they went backstage and then did their entrances. Oh, explain. Anyway, this match was the other good match of the night. I say good, it's a star and a half. Think about that. <sighs> anyway, so the boring chance after one minute. That shows you how much the live crowd appreciate this one. One minute in, a boring chance. Yay! So, Madden stresses that, uh, Mark Madden that is, stresses that Palumbo and Stasia are cool, that they're on the same page. Stevie Ray, who has taken over from Scott Hudson on commentary, why, I don't know. I promise you, I can't tell you that. And, and Tony Schiavone both tell you that there obviously there's something wrong, so you're like, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. And predictably, oh, it's predictably, they, um... They are start arguing so that one of so that uh, Lash can get a two count. They then begin to own Charvo, including Stadia hitting a really, really quite nice uh, sit down power bomb for two. Lush gets the hot tag and gets sorry, I said Lush then, didn't I? Lash no Lash LaRue gets the hot tag and Prop gets the hot tag is a clothesline. He then gets owned. Stupid! Really, really, really stupid. And then he gets sleeper hole. Oh! Can you people understand why I don't like the sleep hold so much? It is the biggest heat killer of any move in existence in pro wrestling. It should be banned forever. It is such a... I mean, I know they've got to have rest holds in matches. I understand that. But when you've got a match that's building nicely and the heat's there and the crowd are into it and then bam, a sleep hold, it just completely destroys it. Incidentally, on this show, there's four of the damn things. Oh, it makes me mad. <sighs> nice face buster by Lash leads to a hot tag to Charvo. He actually does get a hot tag and he gets a very, very nice DDT on Chuck Plumbo. Chuck Plumbo accidentally um, a super kicks Stasia. Tornado DDT by Charvo gets the win. But who cares about that? WCW sure as don't. As literally, we don't even get to see them with their arms raised before we cut to the back for promos. Now, do you tell me, if WCW don't give two shits about this match, 
Why should I? I mean, literally, I promise you, you don't get to see them raise their arms. You just, it just literally, that, you, know, you see one, two, three, their music hits, and it's straight to the back for promos. Damn. We see Conan. He's in the back, bearing in mind what I said before, and he looks absolutely fine. In fact, he's talking about the match that's upcoming. Bear in mind what I said. So, Conan and Tigress defeated Shane Douglas and Tory Wilson in our first of many minus star matches of the evening. Let me tell you about this one. So, it's meant to be Tigress versus Tory Wilson, but Conan, who was injured, bear that in mind, he was injured. He got carried out by referees. He makes the save, which means running to the match. He can't be that injured, can he? He can't. Why was he fucking taken out by refs if he can run to the ring? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, basically, uh, yeah, a minute of Shane Douglas and Tory Wilson absolutely owning Tigress. Conan comes out to make the save. <sighs> Let me tell you something. Uh, you got Shane Douglas and Tory Wilson on the outside. So Tigress and Conan run off the ropes and both do drop kicks through the ropes. Yeah, of which Tory Wilson completely no sells her. I mean, completely. Absolutely no sells it. Like nothing happened. The other thing I need to point out about this match, and this is just one of those things that just bugs me the tiniest little bit, is that Shane Douglas has got a motherfucking great big brace on his right arm. Yeah, it's like, look at me, I've got an injured arm. So what do Conan and Tigress do? Oh, of course, they work the left arm. <laughs> Reverse psychology, maybe the psychology there. Oh yes, but it doesn't quite work. And you're like, why? Why did he do that? I, mean, I know in wrestling you work the left, I know that, but come on. It just, it, it's hard to suspend your disbelief when he's got this massive, like from there to there, brace on his arm. You're like, yeah, he's obviously got an injured arm. Let's work the left. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, so Conan and Tigress, um, yeah, Tigress get owned. The idiots, oh, the idiot announcers, they botched every move in this match. They call, they call, oh my god, they call a chin lock a Boston Crab. For example, and I'm not joking. I promise, I'm not joking. They call an arm bar, arm bar a cross face chicken wing. Why? I you, I know. I admit that when I was Sir Arthur Hayes and I did the announcing in UBW, I would fuck up moves left, right, and centre. I admit I did. I once called a standing moonstar a standing shooting star press when Crusher J did it on me. I admit that. Yeah, I did that. But come on, I'm not paid to do that. I was doing it out of the goodness of my own heart. You know, it's fucking ludicrous. Anyway, hot tag to Conan, yay. Troy pulls the ref in front of her to block a Bronco Buster, who completely no-sells it, by the way. Horrible botches, the stolen, a double X-Factor gets the win. This is all for marks that literally serve no purpose. It's a minus one star. Oh, yes. The first minus match. Conan no-selling the injury was baffling. I've got to say that. I, again, why get? Do I do the thing where you're getting injured to the point where you have to be carried out by referees at the start of the match, and then just absolutely make no mention of the, of the injuries whatsoever? Stupid. 